today I thought of going through web Bluetooth. So I've been playing with Bailey hardware, which uh, I write a little bit of firmware on it. And often I find that I need some kind of client to grab the data that I'm publishing from this Bailey device and do some debugging or just the process of development. And for this, I found Bluetooth especially web Bluetooth, very, very handy without having to develop an iOS app or an Android app or any kind of mobile app. So today let's look through the web Bluetooth uh, uh, API and see how we can hack up a very simple code, not just to detect a BLE device, but also to grab the data and uh, publish it on the browser. So before we get into the code bits, uh, here are some definitions that I found on the Scilab uh, community website and uh, basically some definitions. So central is something we will refer to, let's say my laptop here, which comes with the Bluetooth connectivity and peripheral is the device, the Bluetooth device that will be basically advertising and waiting for connections specifically from an, another mobile phone or a central or a laptop to connect to. And finally, I would like to bring to your attention to the three kinds of things uh, we can do to the data. We can either read the data, we can write the data, and we can either notify or indicate the data. So Bluetooth uh, or specifically web Bluetooth is a specification that's been worked upon and really it's being updated very, very frequently by the W3C community group. And if you look at the browser compatibility, we will see that Chrome has a very, very good support. Um, well, not to worry because we will be using it to just on the Chrome browser and for our development purpose, but uh, it's a really, really handy feature for me. Finally, the Chrome developer uh, website also has a lot of uh, tutorials on the Bluetooth, uh, web Bluetooth, uh, on JavaScript specifically, as well as they also do have a lot of samples which I have taken inspiration from. So here I am on my desktop on a completely uh, empty folder. I'm gonna create an index.html. And the first thing I'll do here is to have a button. And uh, the button will be an initiation by the user to say that, hey, I wanna see all the Bluetooth devices or I wanna connect to one of them. So I'll basically say connect with the BLE device. So this is basically a security feature that WebBLE gives us so that it has to be user initiated. Now the first uh, thing that we will do is write a function is WebBLE available. So for this, we will first do the failure case if navigator.bluetooth is not available and then we will simply do a console.log and then simply say it is not available else we will simply return true. So let me just return false here. So when I come here and open up the dev console, if I do say navigator dot Bluetooth, hey, guess what? It is available, which means our Chrome browser has support for Bluetooth API. The next function that we're gonna write is uh, to basically detect the BLE device. And so we'll say get the device info. And here we will create some options. For starter, we'll say accept all device equals to true as the option. And this is where we will call the navigator Bluetooth once again, and then we will do request device and pass in the options that we created right here. Device is returned. And over here, we will simply do a console.log once again. It will return a device.name. And quickly, we will just do the catch and print out the error. So we got two functions here, is BLE available and then getting the device info. Now let's uh, try to do something or rather get these two functions when we click on this button. So to do that, we will target the button and we will target the form first and then, and when the form is submitted, which is basically when you click the button, we will have the second parameter as a function, which has a parameter event. And we will basically try to stop all the default events. So we will do event dot 
say uh, stop propagation and we will also do prevent uh, default and finally we will use the two functions that we created if uh, is web BLE available only then we will get the device info and this is a function call all right so let's refresh this and see how it works so when I click the button all right there are some errors Sorry, I'm missing an S here. It should be accept all devices. Let's do a refresh here, connect, and there you see. So obviously I have lots of devices, including the one palm here, which uh, is the BLE device that I'm coding. So next, what we will do is instead of doing accept all devices, we'll be very, very specific. So in this case, we will add something called the filters and it will be an array of object and we will give it a name. So instead of giving all the list, we will say just find palm. In fact, why don't we just create a variable for it? Say device name equals to palm. Okay, and now when we refresh, sorry, there is a device name. And now when we go back and refresh, you see only the required device is coming in the list and we can pair with it. And there you see, it's saying that the name is palm. So far, we looked at the JavaScript code running on the browser, which is basically the code for the central. We will also look at the code for the peripheral, the actual BLE device. So for this, I am using the Adafruit Feather NRF52 uh, is the chip on board containing the BLE connectivity. And for the firmware bits, I'm also using the Adafruit NRF52 a based Arduino firmware. So let me come back to a very, very empty .ino or Arduino file. And let's start by including the header file. And in this case, it is bluefruit.h. So as usual, Arduino will have a setup code. I will just do some uh, serial.begin, some uh, preliminary code on this. So it's basically to define the baud rate and just say start. And finally, I'll do bluefruit dot begin sorry this is a capital letter and i will also set the name blue fruit dot set name and this is exactly where i'll write the name palm that the browser is detecting and finally i'll do start advertising which is a very very typical ble function so this device will start advertising and say hey are there any central around please connect with me and the void loop will, uh, for now, just be empty. So start advertising function has a lot of uh, initiation steps. So basically it will be bluefruit.advertising and we need to add some flags to it. And after that, we'll be adding in a lot of initialization. So one of them will be the transmitting power. We will also say that if it um, disconnects, please restart. And we will set an interval for the Bluetooth advertising. Maybe timeout of 30 seconds. And finally, start. So really, the code is really, really tiny. Is just to advertise that, hey, your name is Palm and just connect to it. So why don't we flash in the firmware? Let's fire up the serial console and the browser. So let me go ahead and connect to the right port and the baud rate, connect and uh, let's start. All right, so seems like there are no compatible devices found. I believe I have made one tiny, tiny error. I believe I need to add here the name. So I'm gonna add name here in the start advertising function. All right, it has flashed in the firmware and let me connect to the serial console and let me do the browser, all right? So palm, and let's pair it. And there you see the name palm is right here. So for the next step, we are gonna publish some values on this uh, BLE device and get the values displayed on the browser from my laptop. Now, Bluetooth low energy or Bluetooth specification uses something called GAT services. And over here, we will be using the environmental sensing bit. And under each service, there is something called the GAT characteristics. And for the GAT characteristics, we'll be using the UV index. Now, right after the header files, we will declare exactly these GAT characteristics and GAT services. So let me paste uh, a 
bunch of code, which is uh, pretty simple actually. First, we will be defining the UV index, which is an uint8. And if you're wondering where did I get this uh, format from, if we query once again the bluetooth.com, they have specified the UV index as uint8. And of course, we will also instantiate the variables environmental sensing service and UV index characteristic. Now inside the setup, it will be exactly the same, but just that before advertising, we will have to set up the environmental sensing service. And finally, inside the loop, we will just create a randomly generated UV index number. So once again, I will generate a random number from 0 to 11 and then first just print it out. And then I have to do a little check whether this Bluetooth uh, characteristic is indicated or not. And if it's successful, I'll just print out the value. If it is not successful, I'll print out the error. And I will do this, say, every one second. Finally, let's do this function set up ESS service right at the bottom. Now, once again, I am taking the code from the Adafruit firmware, but let's see what is happening here. We are initializing the service. We are saying, let's begin it and setting some properties, some permission, and then we are beginning the characteristics. And finally, we are writing to the characteristic. Now, this is part of the setup ESS service. And inside the advertising as well, we will need to add in this. So at the start, we will have to define that we are adding in this service, which is environmental sensing service. So why don't we flash this firmware in? And there you see it is getting the characteristics, the randomly generated number, but of course, indicate is not set yet. We will need the client code for that. So for that, let's quickly go back to the browser and we will start with the HTML. And instead of having just one button, we are going to have three buttons now. And these three buttons will simply be a connect to the BLE device, which is the same, and then start and the stop for the UV values. And under the JavaScript, we will keep the device name, but we will have to define the BLE characteristic and the service. So just in case you're wondering where I got these exact strings from, they're once again from the bluetooth.com, you see UV underscore index. And over here under environmental sensing, you will also have environmental underscore sensing as a string to get. And we will just instantiate two more variables. One is the Bluetooth device detected. And the final one is the get characteristics. Let's also define what exactly we are going to do with these three buttons very quickly. So for these three buttons, we are simply going to detect whether they are clicked. And if Bluetooth is enabled, which we already defined previously, we are going to do the reading, the starting, and then the stopping. As for the is Bluetooth enabled, this function remains exactly the same, but inside the get device info, now, instead of just printing out the device, we will basically use the variable Bluetooth device detected and capture the entire device that is returned. And finally, we do not need this function anymore, which is uh, the previous one. But instead, we are going to have the three functions here, the read, the start, and the stop. So why don't we first define the function read? Now, if the Bluetooth device is already available, then we will resolve the promise. If not, we will get the device info once again. So upon resolving the promise, we will connect to the GET. And then we will do a bunch of things. If the connection to the GET is successful, we will basically start reading the UV index value. And finally, we will also do some error checking. And uh, if the reading has not started, we will say, hey, we are waiting to start the reading. So the next thing we need to do is to define the function connectGet. Now inside connectGet, if the Bluetooth device is detected and the GET is connected and the GET characteristics is already defined, then we will simply return the promise. Else we will actually call the GET connected. 
And when we call it, there are three things that will happen. First will be uh, the return of the server and then the service will be returned and finally the characteristics. So for the server, we will just console log and then uh, return the primary service, the BLE service that we already defined. For the service, we will do something similar, but in this case, we will return the characteristics and we will also put in the BLE characteristic variable that we defined. And finally, for the characteristics, we will finally use the variable that we defined right at the top, get characteristics, and sort of store it in. And we will also listen for the characteristic to change. Characteristic value changed. And we will pass in another function which will basically handle the changed value. So as we know that in our firmware, we are changing or rather generating the random value every one second, so it will be changing. And finally, I'll add in some DOM manipulation for the button. So uh, immediately after you press the start button, it will be uh, not disabled. And after you, uh, it, the stop should be disabled. This is so that the user is able to finally click the start button. All right, so why don't we quickly also define this function, which is what to do when the changed value actually comes in. So it will be as an event. And I will define a value which will be the same uint8 value. And finally, I will also log in the date as well as the UV index value. Let's test it out in the browser. Looks like I have a little error here. And when I come here, all right, I will need to put in the return. All right, let's try it. We will pair it. And yes, there is a slight error on 56. It is waiting for it to start reading. So this means we will have to define the start and the stop function. So let's go ahead and do that. And inside function start, we will do the get characteristics dot start notification. And once that happens, we will just console log start reading and we will disable the start button because you have already started it, but we will enable the stop button so that the user can now stop it. And finally, a little bit of error checking. I'm just going to console log it. Now the function for stop will be very, very similar. So let me just copy it, the start, and this change this to stop. And notice, of course, we have to do stop notifications and we have to stop reading. And in this case, the start will be again enabled and the stop will be disabled. And I'll also do the error checking on the stop. So why don't we test it out in the browser? So let's try it out on the browser. So let's connect it, paired, and let's start. There is an error. Of course, I made a spelling mistake. It is get characteristics. Let me change it in the stop as well. Let's start once again, connect, paired, start. And there you see the UV index. And we can see if we compare it with the serial console, the UV index is right there. And if you stop it, you will see that once again, it will say in the serial console, the UV index is not set. So there you see both the firmware code as well as the browser code with JavaScript right here to detect the BLE get characteristics as well as the get service. So that is it. Uh, I'm definitely scratching just the surface on how to uh, upload the firmware on a BLE device and then get the GAT service and GAT characteristic displayed on the browser, just the surface. But there are plenty of examples thanks to Adafruit and the firmware community as well as the Chrome community that we can dive into the web BLE part of it. So let's go ahead and explore it.